House of Twenty, Beaver and Andy. Starring Barbara Billingsley. The day you were born, you cost me a dollar. How'd they do that? Well, I was working in the machine shop then, and I took this silver dollar and I drilled a hole in it. And I stuck a white ribbon through it and I, I give it to your father. That's how come you cost me a dollar. Oh, yeah. Where's the gun? There's a man outside who wants to possibly talk to you. Who is it? He didn't say his name, but he's the man who gave me the dollar with the hole in it for being born. That's Andy Hadlock. I haven't seen him in years. Andy I just been noticing your trim here. They could use a, a coat of paint, don't you think? Oh, I think we can get through another season. Sure good to see you, though, Andy. I could do the whole job in a couple of three days. Look, uh, look, Andy, I'd like to help you. You know that. What about your trouble? Oh, I haven't had that five or six months. Give or take a day. All right. When could you start? Well, I can, I can get my brushes and I can start right after lunch. It's nothing, Beaver. Dear, I have nothing against Andy. It's just that I hope he doesn't start drinking on the job again. Oh, there. Well, whiskey smells awful. Then why do people drink it? Well, uh, it's like when grown-ups have a party. They drink it to have a good time. Gee, if it's a party, don't they have a good time anyway? Well, grown-ups have a harder time having a good time than kids do. <laughs> you all by yourself, Beaver? Uh-huh. Did you want something? Well, I tell you, I, I, I've been working out there, and I... I kind of got a little shaky. What could you make it on, Andy? Let me ask you something, Beaver. Does your father... Would he have a little bit of whiskey around? There you are. Well, thank you, Beaver. I'll, I'll just take this outside, so I'll have it there in, in, in case I get shaky again. He was going to tell me some more stories about the war. Now I'll have to wait until tomorrow. I'm afraid he won't be back tomorrow, Beaver. And he's been working pretty hard, and he needs a little rest. Well, about him drinking whiskey and falling off the ladder and stuff. Wally, I thought we weren't going to say anything about this to your brother. Well, we weren't, Mom, but he kind of dragged it out of me. You know how he does. Well, I gave him that bottle of stuff from Uncle Billy that you poured on the cake. Oh, boy, Beaver. Yeah. Well, he came in and said he felt shaky, and I gave it to him. Well, Beaver, don't you know that's the worst thing you could possibly have done? Don't you know that's what got Andy started all over again? Well, sure, Dad. I know what to do if I know stuff. Heck yeah. You and Mom shouldn't be as scared to tell us things. Somebody's got to tell a guy about all the bad junk in the world. Yeah. Did they find out that you were the one that... that helped me yesterday? Yeah. They found out. And they were pretty mad at me, too. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Beaver. I... I really am. Leave it to Beaver! Episode 21, Beaver's Dance. Starring... Barbara Billingsley. A series of six dances. Miss Prescott's running the dances, and they start this Saturday afternoon, and the boys wear blue suits and white gloves, and the little girls are going to be in organdy, and they're in the pink room of the hotel. You sure our beaver belongs in there? They sound like a pretty clean bunch. <laughs> yeah, it's real neat, Beef, and they're throwing it in the pink room of the hotel. I'm not going. I don't care what you do to me, I'm not going. I don't care if you kill me or give me away some poor people. Why am I going? <laughs> Well, sure, Beef. When you get to be my age and you don't know how to dance, you're gonna feel like a creep. <laughs> That's right, Beaver. And your friend Larry Mondello's coming. Well, it seems as though we've run out of girls, haven't we, Mr. Cleaver? Yeah. Should I go sit down? <laughs> you may ask me for the honor. <laughs> oh. Hey, have the fireworks started yet? What fireworks? Well, this is Saturday afternoon. We were supposed to go to that dance again. Your brother is upstairs getting dressed. There won't be any fuss this week. Yeah, sure, Dad. Now, Beaver, I've heard enough complaining. You just put that suit on this minute. Uh-uh. 
Well, I took my bath and I cleaned my ears, but I'm not putting a suit on. Did I make that big a fuss when I had to go to dancing school? Not at all, Wally. You always used to look forward to it and even come home with ribbons. Boy, I must have been a real square. Right now, he's probably fox-trotting madly in the arms of some sultry nine-year-old. Hey, you want another hunk of meat? You got any more? Yeah, I think so. See? Isn't this better than dancing with girls? Anything's better than dancing with girls. <laughs> How do you make him go? Come on, Whiskers. Boy, Lottie, isn't this neat? Yeah, Beef. I think so. Well, how was dancing school? Well, just fine, Mrs. Cleaver. Wasn't dancing school just fine, Beaver? Oh, yeah, dancing school is just fine. Beaver, your suit, it's all wrinkled and mussed up. <laughs> boys. Don't you think it'd be a good idea if I called Mrs. Prescott and had a little talk with her? No, sir. I don't think it'd be a good idea at all. To pretend that you were going to dancing school and, and then spend the whole afternoon ruining your clothes riding an old horse. I'm ashamed of you. And I'm disappointed. Both of you. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 22, Larry's Club. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Do you have any idea where he could have gone? No. But he must have left in a hurry, though, because his towel's still dry, and he threw his dirty socks under the bed. <laughs> the bed? Yeah. I picked him up with a stick and put him in the dirty clothes hamper. Raise your right hand. I, Theodore Cleaver, promise to be a loyal member of the Bloody Five, and only go around with other Bloody Five guys as long as I live. And not to squeal. Oh, yeah. Not to squeal on him, even if I get killed for it. Hey, when are you guys going to initiate Larry? We're not asking Larry. This club's just for neat guys. Larry's kind of a neat guy. Yeah, he's a kind of a neat guy. But he's not neat enough to be a bloody five. <laughs> what happened between you and Beaver? Well, well, Harold and some of the other guys at school got up a club. And they were whispering. And I heard Beaver was going over this morning and joined. That's why the rat wasn't home. Hey, Larry. What are you doing with that paper bag on your head? Oh, I forgot. I was still wearing my secret hood. What's that funny look at that in your arm? Oh, what did you talk about? Larry belongs to the neatest club I ever heard of. No, tough luck. Well, I'd sure like to be a fiend. Well, how can you be a fiend when you already swore yourself up to be a bloody five? Beaver Cleaver, resign myself from the Bloody Five. On account, I don't want to belong to the Bloody Fives. Yours truly, Theodore Cleaver. Gee, Beaver, you mean you're quitting? How come? Is your mother making you? Fellow fiends, this year is Beaver Cleaver, and I want you should vote on him for being a new member. Stand up, Beaver, so the fiends can see you. <laughs> Well, now turn around so the guys in back can see you. <laughs> I didn't think there was anybody here, Larry. But gee, Beaver, what a ratty thing to do. You got no club at all. Well, you did a rattier thing by joining the Bloody Fives without me. They the Beaver joined the Bloody Fives, and they wouldn't take Larry. So Larry told Beaver that he belonged to the Fiends. So Beaver quit the Bloody Fives to join the Fiends. But Larry was only making up the fiends, and so they got mad at each other, and I didn't have anything to do with it. Are you going to make up with Larry? Gee, Larry and I don't need to do that. Tomorrow I'll just say, hi, Larry, and he'll say, hi, Beaver, and then we'll go start doing something, and we'll forget all about hating each other. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 23, School Sweater. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Well, you uh, have your high school letterman sweater. Wear that. 
Oh, well, um, well, that's sort of in school. Sort of in school? You haven't lost it, have you? Uh, well, no. No, I haven't lost it. Wally, that sweater cost $19. Now, you bring it home. Look, Wally, when you see her, just tell her you want your sweater back. But heck, Eddie, I don't know her that good. Then how come you loaned her your sweater? Well, she came up to me after the basketball game, and she said she was cold. She was giggling and stuff, so I said she could wear it home. Now, if you're finished using it, could I have it back? Oh, why, of course, Wally. Oh, well, thanks a lot. I'll bring it to school and give it to you the first thing tomorrow. <laughs> oh. Why, Wally, I worked to school this morning, and you wouldn't want me to get all soaky going home. He's been trying to get a date with me for two weeks. He just follows me everywhere. I didn't think Wally Cleaver followed any girls. Well, he doesn't. But he told me, Francis, you're not just any girl. That doesn't sound like Wally. Ward, I thought you were going to talk to him. Oh, dear, this is hardly the time or place. Anyway, as, uh, as long as he has his mind on gophers, I think we're safe. <laughs> well, all right, but you talk to him soon. And if that doesn't work, I'm just going to call up that girl's mother. Wally, do you know a girl named Frances? Uh, you mean, uh, Frances Hobbs? Well, is that the Frances who has your letterman sweater? Oh. Oh, you know about that, huh? She told the whole drugstore last night about how she had you wrapped around her little finger and how you were following her around. She said that? <laughs> she certainly did, and naturally, it upset your mother and me very much. Especially after you lied about what happened to your sweater. Boy, have I been taken. Uh, Francis, I came to get my sweater. Oh, well, Wally, I'm going to bring it to school on Monday. Uh-uh. Would you please go get it right now? <laughs> well, all right, Wally. No, Francis, I'm sorry. I'm going to be busy tomorrow. <laughs> yes, all day. Oh, uh, and Francis, I would appreciate it if you would not be annoying me and calling me on the telephone at my parents' house. <laughs> I told her off real good this afternoon. And now she calls me up. Yes, and I think you can count on her calling you again. And, uh, probably again. It's just, uh, one of the ways of women. Oh, well, some very sensible girl from a nice family. One with both feet on the ground who can cook and keep a nice house and see that he's happy. Oh, dear, I got the last one of those. <laughs> That's very sweet of you to say that. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Episode 24, The Hypnotist. Starring Barbara Billingsley. <laughs> ah, my little dove. Do not try to resist. You are in my power. <laughs> Beaver, what are you doing? Heck, Dad. This is my magic omelet, and I'm trying to hypnotize you. <laughs> Yeah, she's sort of a girl. You know something, Wally? What? You're getting to be an awful wise guy since you started taking baths. <laughs> hey, you know something? We could really give that beaver the business. What do you mean? We could pretend like he hypnotized us and scare the little squirt right out of his skin. Nah, that's a dirty trick, Eddie. Sleep. 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 You are now under my command, and will do anything I say. Eddie? Eddie? Eddie, wake up! Come on, Eddie, wake up! Come on, wake up! Wake up, Eddie, wake up! Hey, babe. Come on, Eddie, wake up! Hey, babe, come here! <laughs> Cut it out, will you, Eddie? Yeah, Eddie, why don't you leave him alone? Master, I kill for you. I steal for you. Well, if a guy hypnotized a guy, and the guy who was hypnotized committed a crime, would the hypnotizer be sent to jail? Well, Beaver, I don't think that would work. It seems to me I read somewhere that even if a person is hypnotized, they won't do anything that goes against their moral code. Well, yesterday, I hypnotized Daddy, and today he was following me around saying he was my slave. Oh, come on, Beaver. He was just giving you the business. <laughs> oh. 
Hi, Wally. Hi, Eddie. What's the matter, Slay? Having fun, wise guy? Gee, Wally, you know how it is. <laughs> Episode 25, Wally and Alma. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Ward, do you think he's serious about this girl? I think if he was serious about her, he wouldn't leave this around for us to find. Well, I wish you wouldn't be so calm about it. I think you should come right out and ask Wally who this girl is. Uh, Wally, uh, we're not prying. We're, we're just curious. Oh, well, they're having this picnic at school, and they made all the guys pull girls' names out of this basket. And I got Alma, so I got to take her. Oh. oh, Wally, don't you look sweet? Doesn't he, Ward? Well, I'm not sure that sweet is exactly the word. Uh, what do you think, Beef? Of course not. He's not going over there so they can smell him. Uh, well, Wally, we'd like to know what kind of an evening you had. Oh, well, uh, first I went in and I said hello to everybody, and then, uh, then we all stood around in the living room eating the junk off crackers, and somebody said, let's go eat, so we went in the dining room. <laughs> When did he ask her to play tennis? Oh, Wally didn't do the asking. Alma's mother called up and suggested it. <laughs> and next week after the picnic, they wanted to go up to the lake with him. Mrs. Hansen was very impressed with Wally. But, uh, your mother tells me you may need a white coat for a dance soon. Yeah, well, gee, Dad, I don't know. I, I kind of don't want to go. Well, why don't you just tell Alma you don't want to go? You're not afraid to tell her, are you? No, but he's afraid to tell her mother. <laughs> I wasn't particularly interested, so uh, from that time on, whenever I called on her, I just happened to take one of my fraternity brothers along. And the first thing you know, she got interested in one of the other fellows, and, well, I was off the hook. Uh, Eddie kind of likes to talk, Yelma. Really? I never would have known. I am from England. I'll make it over to France. I dig that ooh-la-la. <laughs> Do you plan to call on General de Gaulle? Uh, uh, Clarence was telling me that uh, after he gets out of college, his father would like him to become a lawyer. Isn't that right, Lumpy? Yeah, a trial lawyer. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Well, thank you, Wally. Yeah, and uh, he could probably teach you to cha-cha, too. Oh, but he's, uh, he's not as nice a guy as Harry is. <laughs> We have a problem, and I'll get right to the point. I'm afraid your son, Wally, has been demanding much too much of my daughter's time. Oh? I didn't mind Wally coming over in the beginning, but now he's at our house every day. And even if poor Alma has another boy come to call, your son always manages to be there. <laughs> Mrs. I just don't like to see a popular girl uh, tying herself down to any one boy. Mrs. Hans. Oh, Mrs. Hanson, uh, if you say so, we'll certainly try to uh, restrain Wally. Well, gee, thanks, Dad, for getting me off the hook with Alma. I was kind of running out of guys to take over there. Hey, Wally, who's the guy with the mustache you and Dad were talking about? Oh, uh, well, that's Alma's father. What does he do? He stands by the fireplace and smokes a pipe. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Well, nothing, but that's all he does. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 26, Beaver's Bike. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Wally, do you think when I ask him, Dad will say yes? Well, I don't know. Sometimes when you think he'll say no, he says yes. And sometimes when you think he'll say yes, he says no. With me. Oh, I don't want to have a little talk with you, Dad. I just want to know, could I ride my bike to school? Well, Beaver, you just got it Saturday. Anyway, you ride to school on the bus. But if I rode my bike, I wouldn't have to ride in the bus. Well, hi. Hi. <laughs> hey, kid, is, is this neat bike your bike? Yeah, this neat bike's my bike. Sure. Do you think I could give it a try? Give it a try where? Just up and down. What do you think, Larry? Well, if it was my bike, I'd let him ride it. 
Hey, Larry. How long has that kid safe be gone? A couple of minutes. Has he been gone that long? <laughs> I think he's been gone a couple of couple of minutes. <laughs> he can't never come back, because we know where he lives. Well, how do we know that? <laughs> On account of he's a friend of yours. Gee, Beaver, I never saw that kid before. <laughs> Beaver? Is your bicycle wrecked, or was it lost? No, Mom. It was stole. Stole? <laughs> yes, sir. It was stole by a kid in front of the candy store. Boy, Beaver. Beaver, that was a brand new bicycle. You say it was a new bike? Oh, yes, yes, we got it last weekend. Well, of course, the best thing we have to go on is the registration number. The registration number? Yes. Didn't you take it down to police headquarters and have it registered, and they gave you a little license tag? It's a city ordinance, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I did know about that, and I meant to register it. I, uh... <laughs> Where's the paper this afternoon? Wally, we have good news. The police called, and they found the bicycle, and your father went to school to pick Beaver up, and they've gone down to get it. Hey, that's neat. Did they catch the guy that crooked it? Back. You gonna let him ride it to school? Well, I'd rather he wouldn't, but if all of his friends do, then I guess I won't say no. Well, gee, Mom, if all of his friends played with dynamite, would you let him do that, too? Wally, where in the world would you get such a silly idea? The guy pulled it on Beaver the other night. <laughs> oh, Beaver, what a shame. Your brand new bicycle. Well, you know, actually, Joan, it isn't too bad. It, it can be fixed. Well, sure. And anyway, after he had it a month, it would look like this anyway. Well, no, what's not? What are you going to say that for? Beaver, I was over on Grand Avenue, and I saw that kid who stole your bike. You saw him? You really saw him? Yeah. And I went up and tried to speak to him, and he ran away. Yeah. My dad said he'd do that, on the kind of conscience would bother him. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 27, Wally's Orchid. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Well, the sophomores are having the spring dance Saturday night, and it costs $3 a couple. Oh, you were going to take a young lady, huh? Well, sure, Dad. A couple's got to be a young lady and a fella. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Wally, even though you spent your allowance, I think I might invest $3 in your social progress. Yeah, three chances to ask her already. What's the matter? Uh, there's no rush, Eddie. She just had a big fight with Roger Clark, and they busted up. The thing to do is to move in, take advantage of it, before they make up. You want to go to the dance? What? Well, you want to go to the dance with me? The dance Saturday? Wally, I'd love to. I'm chairman of the dance committee, and, well, my mother thought it would be nice if I wore an orchid. How do you feel about orchids? Oh, I feel all right about orchids. <laughs> well, uh, which one costs less? They're exactly the same. $7.50. The blue flower? <laughs> they don't smell so expensive. <laughs> Well, this Myris used to going out with senior guys and everything, and I don't have a car, and you're going to have to drive us back and forth, and, well, at least if I could get her an orchid, that might take the curse off me. Don't you think we could stretch a point and get it for him? She is a very pretty girl, and he probably just wants to make the gallant gesture. Well, that's fine, but at his age, I think he'd better learn to make it with gardenias. Dear, it's Wednesday, and the dance is Saturday night. Don't you think we could stretch a point and make no, it? No, dear. Now, I gave him the money for the tickets, and he has a very generous allowance. I am not going to give him $7 to buy an orchid. Anyway, this girl should accept Wally the way he is, or not at all. Could I buy your orchid? <laughs> well, give me 25 cents for it. Well, I don't quite understand. Would you like my orchid for your mother? Good. Now, my dear, you take these and you give them to your brother with my compliments. Don't you want the 25 cents? No, see at all. Are you going to tell Mom and Dad about you having an orchid? Nah, there's no use telling them. I just stick it behind this lettuce and carrots and junk. <laughs> Nobody eats it. It still looks pretty good. Yeah. But it's beginning to smell like salami. Maybe you could yank the boundaries off it. Yeah. Wally wanted me to call up that girl and tell her he's sick and can't go to the dance when a guy doesn't have an orchid for her. But he can't do that. This is Saturday afternoon. The dance is tonight. 
How dare I uh, pick these gardenias up for Wally on the way home from the club? Ward, I want you to take those back to the florist and exchange them for an orchid. You heard of Pressed Duck? Well, this is Pressed Orchid. A fella gave it to me when I was 16 years old. Well, that's a nice try, dear. But just because some crazy boy gave you an orchid when you were 16 is absolutely no justification for... Most of the time she was dancing with other guys, you know, seniors and stuff. Boy, all those guys messing up my orchid. Well, I think I'll go to bed now. Hold on. Hey, Dad, thanks a lot for the orchid. That was real neat of you. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 28, Ward's Baseball. Starring Barbara Billingsley. The other day, took it up time I had this pedestal made for it, see? Look. Look who signed it. Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Lefty Grove, Kai Kai Kyler, Augie Galan. That's nice, dear. See, uh, my Uncle Frank was a ball player, and we went to the game together one day, and afterwards he took me down in the locker room and had all of his pals autograph it for me. See, I guess that was about the biggest day of my life when I was a kid. Kai okay, Larry, let's put it away. We threw it four times and didn't hurt it. Let's throw it another four times. <laughs> okay. This is the last four times. <laughs> What'd you go and do that for? How's it look, Larry? It looks real neat. Poor Larry. Sure is lucky he had that 25 cent ball at home. Sure, Dave. I'm your pal. I wouldn't leave you in a spot. Here we are, Fred. Oh, uh, what do you think of the little memento? You old jokester. You know, I nearly fell for it. <laughs> fell for what? Kai Kai Gehrig. Augie Dickie. Baby Ruth. It's perfectly obvious how you feel, Beaver. It doesn't mean a thing to you that I've had this ball since I was 17. It doesn't mean a thing to you that it's a very valuable memento. It doesn't mean that much to you. Hey, Beef, what are you going to do today? I'm going to stay in my room today, and every day for a week. And I'm not going to watch television. And I'm going to eat my Sunday dinner up here, too. <laughs> what are you going to do all that for? Because my father found out about the wreck baseball. Look, I know what you're both thinking. You're thinking that I lost my temper about the baseball and that I'm punishing him unfairly. Now, isn't that what you're thinking? Well, gee, Dad, I wasn't thinking at all. I was just concentrating on my dinner. <laughs> well, you two are probably right. I think the punishment was too hard. And all this is not worth having him hate me. Better go out and tell him to come out of his room. Well, well, you know, Wally, I never thought of it this way. I, I guess I would, sir, be letting Beaver down if I went back on my word. I think so, too, Dad. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 29, Beaver's Monkey. Starring Barbara Billingsley. <laughs> Now look, you know I'm gonna keep that mouse, so don't get your heart set on it. Hey, it sure is little. Boy, it is not all right for the beaver to have a mouse. I just don't want it around here. Well, but dear, bringing a mouse home is just part of boyhood. I. You see, Beaver, your mother and I wouldn't have objected too much if you'd brought home a, a regular pet. Gee, no fooling, Dad. Oh boy, Whitey's cat had eight kittens, and Whitey said I could have all the girl ones. Yeah. Good home, Whitey, for a full grown monkey. Free, cage included. Owner's leaving town, and it gives a phone number and everything. Golly, a whole free monkey for nothing. A monkey? Yeah. Well, yes, I did tell him he could have a pet, but I. Uh... <laughs> Yes, I imagine Theodore was very enthusiastic. What was that all about? Oh, nothing unusual. It uh, seems our son is on his way home with a monkey. A live monkey? Live monkey. Dear, I think that's your job. After all, you're his father. Right now, I don't want to think like a father. I want to think like a kid. Oh, honey, I just can't. 
can't imagine a, a little monkey running around the house. Well, I'm gonna put him away. Well, how's our new boarder coming? Swell, Dad. He's the best pet I ever had. He's the biggest one, too. Bye, Stan. We'll see you after school. shivering all over. Do you think maybe he's sick? Well, I'm afraid it's pneumonia. Is he gonna die? Well, you see, son, this is a macaque monkey. He lives in the tropics. He doesn't belong in a climate like this. Yeah. How's Stanley? He slept for four hours. Oh, the doctor said to keep him warm. He uh, didn't kick the covers off, did he? No, honey, no, he didn't. You sure? I'm positive. I sat with him most of the day. <laughs> Well, the veterinarian said this was the wrong kind of climate for Stanley. Yeah. Boy, if I was a monkey, I'd sure be a lot happier in South America. You know, Wally, I made a promise to myself. If Stanley ever gets better, I'm going to find a way to send him to South America or someplace like that. Look, Dad, he feels fine now. My name is Theodore Cleaver, and my monkey's name is Stanley, and I'd like to send him to South America. Eighty whole dollars? <laughs> Couldn't he go children's fair? Well, I'll tell you, Beaver, uh, maybe there's another way out of this. Gee, Dad, no food? No. You know, we've got a pretty good zoo here in Mayfield. Remember when we were out there? And they had that big steam-heated monkey house? And a place for him to play outside in the summer? Leave it to Beaver. Episode 30, Beaver Finds a Wallet. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Good morning, Theodore. Eddie, how come you're only polite to me when my mother's here? Uh, Mrs. Cleaver, is Wally ready? Ready? Yes, he and I had a date to go jumping this morning. Beaver, you know, I was just thinking. Yes, Mom? Do you think you could possibly go to the market for me? Sure, Mom. I think I'd possibly go. <laughs> hey, Larry, look. There's a wallet. Uh, it's just a hunk of junk someone threw away. <laughs> look, Larry, it's stuffed with money. Boy, there must be hundreds of dollars in there. Are you the two boys that found a wallet? Yes, sir. I'm Theodore Cleaver, and this is my friend, Larry Mandela. We found it over on Grand Avenue. We're in the gutter. It must have fell there. Show it to him, Beaver. Well, on the way to the market, Larry and I were looking in the gutter, and we found a wallet. And Larry's house was closer, so we took it there, but nobody was home. So we took it to the police station, and in ten days, I get to keep the money. I've been thinking about that money you found. He's been thinking about it, too, Dad. He's practically got it all spent. Yeah. Well, Beave, I think we should make an effort to locate the owner. I think it'd be a good idea to put an ad in the paper. Gee, Dad, I thought I was being honest enough already. The guy that lost it might be a crook. Walks into the police station, they're liable to arrest him. <laughs> Better leave your name out, too, boy. Why? Why? If the guy's a crook, he's liable to come around and rub you out for stealing his money. Well, this is the tenth day. Looks like he's gonna get his money. He was so excited and happy. He's gonna give each one of us a pair of silk pajamas, and he's gonna give Larry ten dollars just because he was with him when he found it. Well, I found something, and they're gonna give it to me. Well, I lost something. I guess that puts us both in the same boat. Well, I guess you lost a dog or a cat or something, huh, lady? No, as a matter of fact, I lost a wallet. I guess hundreds of people lose wallets. Yes, sir. It's her wallet. You know, Miss Tompkins, 
You certainly aren't lucky that a nice, honest little fellow like this found it. I certainly am, and I think he's just a wonderful boy. I'm going to take your name and address and send you the very nicest present I can find. Well, she finally came through, huh? Well, I knew she would. I knew she would. Look, Wally, it's a radio with a clock in its middle. Why, Beaver? And I was beginning to think that lady was just giving you the business. It is a very nice reward, dear. When did you find time to buy it? <laughs> Yesterday, noontime. Father well, may have gone a little overboard, but I think it was worth $16.95 to restore his faith in human nature. Leave it to Beaver! Episode 31, Mother's Day Composition. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Can I have 20 cents for flowers from Miss Landers? What's the occasion? She's sick. Oh, well, that's too bad. Is she going to be out long? Well, I guess so. We're spending four dollars. When she was sick with the flu, we only spent two fifty. About ten after class. The first appearance of Richard Rickover. Yes, Richard. Can we write about movie stars? My cousin was in the army with Sal Minio. <laughs> well, Mother's Day is soon, and we could write about our mothers. How we love them and pray for them. How they fix our lunch, and they wash our dirty clothes and everything. Well, Larry, that's a very good idea. Well, during the war, I worked for the USO. Is that the same as the wax? Well, then did you go overseas? Well, no, Viva, that was right here in Mayfield. You see, every Thursday night, I'd go down and I'd help them serve coffee and sandwiches to the soldiers and the sailors. Medal for doing more than her duty. When the war was over, the town she lived in gave her a dinner and three suitcases for serving her country. Well, Rick. I haven't got mine. Why not, Theodore? Well, I don't know. But did you forget to write it, lose it, or what? Well, something happened to it. Look, Beaver, I got a geometry test. I can't help you with your composition. But gee, Wally, some of the guys even got heroes for moms. I can't make my mom sound like she's nothing. Out there would be very interested in how you achieve this tremendous success. Well, I'll start off by telling you that to become a success on Broadway is a long, hard struggle. <laughs> I can well imagine. School teacher. <laughs> but I wanted to go on the stage. So it ended up with me running away from home. Oh, I don't recommend that, but it did get me started. <laughs> My famous mother ran away from home when she was 17 to be a dancer. She tried to get a job dancing as a chorus girl. <laughs> That's a lady who dances in her bare feet. <laughs> but she couldn't. So she got a job dancing in dives. Also beer parlor and joints. Oh, uh, she left a note. She went out of school to talk to Mrs. Rayburn about something. Oh. You know what it's all about? No, I don't know what it's all about. What are you doing sitting in there? I'm sitting in here so nobody can get at me. What are you talking about? Oh, I wrote a composition about Mom, and it was a whole bunch of lies. Well, Mrs. Rayburn called her down to school, and as soon as she gets home, everybody's going to jump on me. Show, and she was a big success. <laughs> then the gangster got arrested, but my mother didn't. She was in five more shows, but quit when she was married to my father, who was a <laughs> tap dancer. <laughs> Don't you dare laugh. And he wants you to be the most glamorous, exciting mother in the whole world. Want some coffee? No, thanks. Well, I'm sorry you're letting down. Dad, is Mom mad at me for making her up a chorus girl? No, she's not mad at you because we both understand why you did it. Does Mrs. Rabbit understand? I think she does. Well, if everybody understands, how come you're yelling at me? Leave it to Beaver! Episode 32, Beaver and Violet. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Say, Ward, uh, when I've been meaning to get together with you folks, how would a picnic this weekend up at Friends Lake strike you and the little bride? Oh, sounds great. I'm sure we'll all have a good time, Beaver. And uh, you should have fun. Violet's going. Violet? I'm sure. She's a friend of yours, isn't she? She's in your class. She's in my class, but she's not a friend of mine. She's a girl. Oh, heck, Beef. Might not be so bad. If she hangs around too much, you can throw bugs on her or something. Yeah. And if I found a dead fish, I could chase her with it. Oh, sure. 
Where do I sit, Daddy? Well, Vi, just get in here and sit on your little schoolmate's lap. Dad. Never mind, Beaver. <laughs> hey, Richard, did you see that? That looked like Beaver. Where? In that car. With a girl sitting on his lap. You're a goofy wife. Now hold it. Violet, give him a great big kiss. That was great. Our office magazine came out today. Oh, Lord, isn't that sweet? <laughs> well, it may be sweet to you and the people down at the office, but I don't think it's going to be sweet to Beaver if he sees it. He took an oath. Yeah, but I didn't know it was going to be this good. Wow. You know what this means, Beaver? Huh? -uh. It means that Violet Rutherford's in love with you. <laughs> uh, cut it out, Whitey. She is not. Mother, I saw a picture on the magazine. What about it? Well, I want to tell you something. Better not. I might punch you. <laughs> I'll tell you anyway. I only kissed you because my father told me to. I don't like you at all. No fooling? You know something, Violet? What? You're not so bad for a girl. You're not so bad for a boy, either. No, Wally. She came right out and said I was messy and dirty, and she didn't like me. Violet came right out and said all that, huh? Yeah. Well, it's pretty neat when you think your girl likes you, turns out to hate you. Yeah. I guess at your age, that's a real kick. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 33, The Spot Removers. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hey, Beaver, you want your share of the bait? Yeah, I might go fishing over the weekend. Well, you got something to put them in? I'll stick them in my pocket till I find something. <laughs> Take some more. There's a whole lot of them. Hey, Beaver, you smell bad. I don't smell bad to me. <laughs> Just smell this. <laughs> Beaver honey's dirty jacket in the closet, right on top of my suit. Well, Beaver, I thought you didn't catch any fish yesterday. He didn't, but his pockets are all jammed up with dead minnows. <laughs> well, that's the way the big leaguers do. Well, I'm gonna be a big leaguer when I grow up. Well, I'd like to be a big leaguer, but I think my father's making me be a doctor. <laughs> hey, Richard, what's he? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess we got some bleats and stuff downstairs. I know just how my mom does it. She puts a towel underneath, and then one on top. And then she pours the bleach on. And when she picks up the towel, the spot's gone. I guess we can look at it now. <laughs> the oil spot's gone. I got a big sister that knows you. Oh, yeah? What's her name? Margaret Rickover. Uh, she says she's always looking at you in science class. Oh, yeah, she kind of gives me the willies. She kind of gives me the willies, too. Boo! Hey! What are you doing, you little creep? Creeps? Yeah, but I've been thinking. We ought to play it cool and casual. I don't mean we should be like gypsies, but... We don't want to look like undertakers, either. Well, I could wear my sport jacket and slacks. Yeah. We'll play it kind of Tony Curtis. Gee, Eddie, thanks a lot. For what? I've got a new sport jacket I want to wear. No, you don't, Eddie. You did help me out. All right, so I helped you out. So I expect you to do something for me in return. Like, uh, robbing a bank or something. all over now. Please stop crying. Just come on, son. Calm down. Get a grip on yourself. 
Gee, Dad, I don't want a big lecture. Just kill me for wrecking the suit. Yeah, Dad. Eddie Haskell caught me painting the suit, and he talked Wally into wearing a sport jacket. Eddie did that? Yeah, Dad. He did a real nice thing. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 34, Beaver the Model. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Look, Wally, you can make yourself hundreds of dollars a day doing glamorous and exciting work. Look, Beaver, I told you before, I don't want to be a New York model. But all you got to do is send your picture in. Our company, one of the largest in the business, considers you one of our top prospects in the modeling field. <laughs> we therefore request your permission to include your likeness in our forthcoming edition of our annual models directory. You know, Wally, I never knew I was such a good-looking guy. Why, well, Beaver, to me, you still look like nothing. <laughs> How come they sent me that letter? Oh, I don't know. Maybe in New York, you don't look so creepy. You, know? you see, I read this letter over, and, well, Beef, I'm afraid it's just a real come on. Well, sure it is, Dad. They want me to come on to New York and be a model. They'll do it to you all the time. Like I sent away for a booklet, and I had a chance to get into radio and television. My old man killed it. He wouldn't give me the measly 80 bucks to sign up. Gentlemen. I would like to take advantage of your generous offer and hereby give you permission to use my photograph in your annual models directory. I furthermore agree to all your terms and conditions. Sir, sir, in accordance with your signed request, we have included your photograph in our models directory, which is now being distributed to all important outlets. Please send the required registration fee of $30 by... Blaming your failure to answer our letters on oversight. However, if the payment of our $30 fee is not in this office within five days, we are turning the matter over to our attorneys for collection. There was Charles Dickens. Did he owe guys money? No, but he wrote about people who did. There was one book about a whole family who had to go to debtor's prison because they couldn't pay their bills. The kids too? There's a Theodore Cleaver here to see you. You don't mean Ward Cleaver, do you? No, Theodore. He's a little boy. Oh, yes, Ward's boy. Yes, I guess he can come in for a minute. Well, I'd like to hire you as my lawyer. <laughs> well, I'm being sued. Sued? Well, just who is suing you? A whole lot of people. I got 46 cents saved up. <laughs> Would that be enough to make you be mean to him? Yes, Cleaver. I'm going to take that fee, because I think you should learn that any time you put yourself in a position where you can't go to your father for help, it's going to cost you something in life. Do you know that young man has been threatened with legal action, he has hired a lawyer, and he's paid him 46 cents to handle his case? <laughs> when did all this happen? George Compton just called. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 35, Wally the Businessman. Starring Barbara Billingsley. What is it? It's just a legal thing, saying I can get a work permit. Oh, you're thinking of going to work? Well, yeah, the summer's coming on, and I want to get out and get a job before they're all taken. Hi, Dad. Hi. Well, what do we have here? This is my new job. I'm selling igloo bars after school and all this summer. Hey, Beaver, get your nose out of my icebox, will you? Hey, Beaver, get your dirty hand out of my icebox. I'm the only one that's allowed to stick my hand in there. It's a Board of Health law. You stick your hand in there and give me a vanilla one. You stick your hand in your pocket and give me 15 cents. That'll be 30 cents. My mommy says she doesn't have any change. She'll pay you tomorrow. Like she did with the other ice cream man. <laughs> uh, Eddie? What's up, Doc? Uh, that'll be 45 cents. Gee, I didn't bring any money with me today. What about trust me till tomorrow? Well, I'm treating the girls, Wally, and I'd like 12 bars. 12 bars, okay. Could you put them in a box and I'll pay you in school tomorrow? <laughs> Gee, boy, that, that's kind of a lot of dough. Care for a pickle, Beaver? 
Gee, Dad, what happened in there? Why, nothing, Beaver. I think I'll have a salami sandwich. How about if you lend me some dough, huh? Why should I? Well, because I'm short. You're not short from giving me free ice cream. You're short from giving your crummy friends free ice cream. Boy, Beaver, you're a rat. Yeah. But I'm around with nine dollars. Uh-uh. Well, sure you do. And then and then you said that your mother didn't have any change and she'd pay me back tomorrow. I don't remember you, mister. I just remember the other ice cream man. I'm sure it wouldn't hurt a big businessman like you to carry poor little old me on your books. Well, I don't have any books, but I guess I'm gonna have to carry poor little old you. <laughs> Hey, Beaver, you didn't make up the difference, did you? Well, well, I kind of put some of my money in. But, gee, how come? Last night you were sore at me and called me a rat and everything. I know, but I don't want to hang around you when you're big and married. I just want to hang around you when you're selling igloo bars. Okay, Beaver, I don't care how big of a pest you are. Anytime I'm selling igloo bars, you can hang around me. To Beaver. Episode 36, Beaver and Ivanhoe. Starring Barbara Billingsley and Penny Bobbins. Yes, dear, he wants to pick one of those books to read. He wondered if you had any of them in here. Well, I hardly think so. Uh, Hoppy the Kangaroo is just not the kind of book I like to curl up with. Yeah, it's a neat looking book, Dad, but what's an Ivanhoe? <laughs> well, uh, Ivanhoe was a knight. Well, like Prince Valiant in the Funnies. Well, there's a lot of excitement in the book, Beaver. Now, uh, say, Beaver, <clears throat> I'm uh, very glad you like Ivanhoe, but I don't want you staying up beyond your bedtime reading it. Oh, sure, Dad. Thanks for making me read it. I don't care if I ever read Hoppy the Kangaroo now. You! Don't you got any respect for women? Ah, uh, what women? That woman you just pushed down on the ground. You better not do that again. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> going on here? Well, this kid... Well, this kid came along and hit me. That's right. We were just standing here, and this kid came along and started my brother for no reason at all. Well, I hit him because he was beating him up. He's from that new family that just moved in over on Grant Avenue, and it was his first morning on the bus. Well, did Beaver have any explanation? Well, the only thing I could get out of him was something about defending womanhood. Well, I saw this kid hitting this girl, and you said about defending women, so I started shocking him. Well, all of a sudden, I'm in big trouble with Miss Landers. Yeah, Dad. He thought the kid was being mean. He didn't know he was only hitting his sister. I think Beaver's actions were gallant and chivalrous. <laughs> and I'm sure that Ivanhoe and Sir Galahad would have been proud of his motives. <laughs> Wasn't Beaver's knighthood always cute? Yeah, he's going to organize his own little round table and right all the wrongs in Mayfield. <laughs> Wouldn't get a spirit like that out of Penny Bobbins. <laughs> Here's my dime. Oh, boy, that's pretty neat. Are you guys really going to do all that stuff? Sure we are, and we're going to take care of bad guys and have tournaments and everything. I'll bring my money tomorrow. It's worth on. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, Beaver, you see, in those days, people weren't quite so civilized. And uh, lots of times, they, well, they had to fight to get justice. Well, sure, Beef. The only way to prove you were a good guy was to kill people. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 37, Wally's Play. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Oh, would you make a little fuss over Wally at supper? What's up? Well, he's been elected to a club called the Crusaders at high school. And they only took in ten sophomores, so it's quite an honor. Well, uh, what activities do the Crusaders plan, Wally? Well, in a couple of weeks, we're going to put on the Crusader Follies. It's kind of a satire. The guys do it every year. Isn't that wonderful, Ward? What do you mean, he's acting strange? Well, I know he got his part in the play, but he won't talk about it. And I'm just sure that something's bothering him. <laughs> Funniest looking cowboy suit I ever saw. <laughs> Look, Gilbert. It's a dress with a skirt and everything. Hey. Put that down, you little snakes. Hello, Wally. Hi, Wally. Boy, what a little snake. I thought I 
I told you to keep your grubby hands off my stuff. Why is your costume a dress? Because it's going to be a girl. A girl? Yeah, the Crusaders are all guys, and they got to play all the parts. And, well, somebody's got to play the dance hall girl, and they gave it to me, and I'm not going to do it. No, sir, nothing doing. No, no, no. I'll quit the Crusaders. I'll quit the school. I'll quit the whole town if I have to. Oh, what? Right. <laughs> I think there's a way you can still stay in the club. But gee, Dad, if I turn down the part, the Duke will throw me out at the Crusaders. Not if you switch parts for someone else. But I don't know anybody goofy enough that would play a girl. Hey, did you get out of being a girl in that play? Nah. I kind of hinted around to Lumpy and Tui, but they wouldn't go for it. Yeah. I guess you gotta be a pretty smart fox to make that stuff work. Duke Hathaway tells me that that's just about the biggest part in the whole play. You mean you got a lot of lines? Oh, I don't know, eight or nine pages. Mary Ellen Rogers said she might come over and coach me. She said she might come over a couple nights a week. Well, that's big of you to see it that way, Cleaver. The Crusaders won't forget what you've done. Good evening, Mr. Cleaver. Mr. Cleaver. Um, Eddie Haskell went over to see the Duke this afternoon, and uh, he whined around. So Duke came over to ask me if I'd do the Crusaders a big favor. By letting Eddie play the dance hall girl. <laughs> What's the matter, Wally? Well, I was just thinking, Eddie doing that dance hall girl so well and everybody applauding and the girls making a big fuss over him, maybe I should have kept that part. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 38, The Last Day of School. Starring Barbara Billings. Hello, oh, Miss Landers. Well, Richard, you seem quite happy that Friday's the last day of school. Well, you know all it is, Miss Landers. I think I do. I was in the fourth grade once. <laughs> what do you want for school, Beaver? Well, you see, Mom, we're on the last day of school, and we're going to have a little party. And we'll all bring a present for Miss Landers. Only thing is, they shouldn't cost too much, so it won't look like we're giving the teacher payola. <laughs> oh, say, June, did you get Beaver's present for Miss Landers? Oh, I was just going to call the store. I thought some handkerchiefs would be a nice middle-of-the-road gift. Yeah, fine. Dear? Louise, remember those two nylon slips I bought last week? Well, would you send me another one? Yes, yeah, the same size. Good. Oh, and um, would you put them in separate packages? I want the, the handkerchiefs gift wrapped. Boy, Beaver, it's a slip. That's some kind of lady's underwear, isn't it? <laughs> sure, it's some kind of lady's underwear. Gee, Wally. I can't give Miss Leonard's underwear in front of the whole class. That was very sweet of you. And I want to thank all of you for your presents. Oh, except Beaver. He didn't bring any. Oh, well, well, Beaver gave me a very nice present. A picture of our capital in Washington. Well, maybe your mother was busy and didn't have time to go shopping. Yeah, that's what happened. She's been busy. She's been busy being sick. Sick? Is it anything serious? Oh, no, it, it's just uh, pneumonia. Oh, I got your present, and it's in my empty locker. But I was too scared to give it to you. Well, why, Beaver? Well, it kind of it's... it's... I don't know. <laughs> they look like handkerchiefs to me. Well, of course they're handkerchiefs. They were supposed to be gift wrapped for Beaver to take to Miss Landers. Well, Beaver took a package this morning. There was one on the hall table. Well, I know, dear, but the store mixed them up. What he took this morning was a slip I ordered. But somehow the boxes got mixed up. It was just a mistake. <laughs> yeah, Mom. I kept telling myself you wouldn't do this to me. Now I'm sure glad I can believe what I was saying. <laughs> hey, what's the idea of you just sitting there and staring at me? I can stare at you if I wanna. Are you just doing that because I gotta go to school and you don't? That's right, it makes me feel real neat. Leave it to Beaver. Episode 39, Beaver's Team. Starring Barbara Billingsley. A football hat, a sweatshirt with numbers on it, and football pants. Oh, he said he only wanted the pants if the other fellas get them. Beaver and his friends have formed a football team called the Lightning Eleven, and he's the captain. Hey, cut it out, will you, Eddie? Is it my fault the kid can't get out of his own way? Come on, let's go, Beaver. Three, hike. Gilbert, I said...
said cut to the right. How come you went left? I didn't know whether you meant my right or your right. They're both the same. Okay, okay, come on back. That's gonna be our secret play. We'll call it old 98. Most of the tigers are bigger than you fellas. Yeah, but we got a secret play. What's a secret play? That's a play that nobody knows about that always wins the game. I get the ball from White, and I pretend to hand it to Gilbert. Then I sneak back. Nobody's looking. I run around the end and make a touchdown. Gee, your brother must be pretty smart. Because they've got a secret play, and Beaver's going to make a touchdown when nobody's looking. <laughs> what do you mean, a secret play? Well, Beaver pretends he hands the ball to Gilbert. But instead, after everyone's full, he makes a touchdown. Hey, Wally, should we use old 98 now? Nah, I think we'd better save it until we really need it. Boy, Wally, if we save it any longer, they'll murder us. <laughs> Signal's on! 98! 22! 98! One, two, three, four, hike! Guess you didn't tell him good enough. <laughs> sure I did. I told him you were gonna beat him, and I told him that you had a secret play, and you were gonna fool him and everything. You told him all that? Sure. And they said you didn't have a secret play. But gee, Dad, I didn't think it was being dumb. Well, son, I think you've learned something here. Never tell anyone anything you don't want repeated. But gee, Dad, I like to talk to people. How can I talk to them if I don't tell them stuff? All right, let's talk about Leave it to Beaver Season 3 again. What can you say about Leave it to Beaver? It's a show that I watched as a kid. It was reruns all the time on WTBS. I think WGN also showed them and perhaps some uh, some of my local channels here as well. Um, I just saw it growing up all the time. Even as an adult, I still saw it rerun a lot. It doesn't get played a ton anymore except maybe on Meat TV. But again, I think this show is great. I think it stands the test of time. It's pretty funny. It, it's, it's a pretty quality show. My kids, who... Uh, are obviously much younger and born in this century, for that example. They enjoy the series, too. They, they think it's pretty funny. They weren't really, didn't think it was going to be great when they saw it was black and white and this and that, but turns out they liked it, too. So I think, again, that's a testament to, to the quality of the show itself. Now, season three saw um, Larry start to get phased out a little bit near the end. Um, he does make two brief appearances in season four, however. Uh, Richard Rickover, uh, another friend of Beaver's, shows up for the first time in this one. Um, Gilbert is in this season as well, still looks pretty young there as well. Um, I think season four is the last season uh, where Beaver kind of looked still kind of young. He looked a little older and gangly in five and six, but he still looks like the young, cute Beaver here. Um, has a couple of standout episodes i think the one where beaver the magician where they uh benji the little kid next door thought the beaver was turned into rock i thought that was uh pretty funny it has some other memorable stuff in that um beaver pretends that he has a pet parrot at home he wins a bicycle when he goes to a movie that he shouldn't be seeing uh there's a mix-up at school when uh uh, Beaver's mom buys a present for Miss Landers, and it's a slip, although they were supposed to send her some handkerchiefs or something like that. Uh, one of the last episodes there. Again, pretty quality season overall, if you ask me. Plus, it's also the first season where they had moved to a new house, um, and they even referenced that because at one point Beaver goes over to the old house to try to <laughs> steal his tree back, which he actually does <laughs> does get. Um, him and Larry steal the tree from the old house to bring it back home because it was his tree. Um, I believe, I'd have to look this up, and I can't remember, and I probably should have, uh, but I think this season three was also uh, where they switched uh, from one uh, um, network to another, which was one of the reasons why the set changed. So, But anyway, they did make references at the end of season two about moving, and season three, they in fact did move. I might have that totally wrong, too. Maybe it was between season one and two that they network changed. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, it's Beaver, Leave it to Beaver Season 3. Now, in the course of reviewing Season 3, an announcement has come out that Leave it to Beaver, the entire series, is going to be released by Universal on Blu-ray. So, when I do Season 4, I'll probably have the Blu-ray because... Again, it's one of my all-time favorite shows, and it's one I want to own. So I will leave a link to something down below. 
probably the Blu-ray set. Check it out. Leave some comments. Let me know what you think about Leave it to Beaver Season 3. Watch it. Bye.